suppose I want to start just by telling you a little story. I was um, on the red eye yesterday to Brussels, uh, which was a 6.50 uh, a.m. Uh, start, so I was up around the 4.50 a.m. I didn't stop the two live, little people who live in my house coming in at 3 a.m. to check if, see if I was still there. Uh, I left my phone in the car on the way to the airport. Uh, uh, realised after I arrived at the airport that I left in the car, so I said, I'll ring. And then I realised the phone was in the, car, in the car. I left three copies of my speeches on the desk in Dublin. And when I arrived in uh, Brussels, uh, the speeches weren't there. They're obviously still here. So that wasn't, uh, that wasn't a great start today. And I thought, now I thought I couldn't, it couldn't get any worse until I had a, you know, I didn't have a phone. But I had a colleague with me, and um, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, his phone rang. And he, uh, he says, he lives, and says oh, oh, it's for you. So he says, it's, it's a journalist for you. And he handed me the phone. Now this, for, for, for politicians, this is the equivalent, the political equivalent of an ambush just happening on the spot. So uh, anyway, I took, I took the call. I said, hello. And it was a, a bit, perhaps you know this lady, Matt. It was a, li a lady called Lisa, I think, from the Irish, Daily, uh, the Irish Daily Mail. And she said to me, have you any comment to make, Lord Mayor, on the fact that your chain has been stolen? All right. This is your now, as it happens, I had the chain with me in a bag right beside me in a secure bag. And I was like, the chain has been stolen. So the first thing was, oh, my God, where's the bag? <laughs> but thankfully, the bag was still there and the chain was in the bag. So I said, ah, no, Lisa, you, there must be some confusion. Um, I actually have the chain in beside me. But she wouldn't believe me. She wouldn't believe me. She says, oh, no, Lord Mayor, we have it on very good, uh, very good report, very good authority that the chain has been stolen. So uh, I said, no, but it's here. So he said, oh, no. So I took the chain out, and I jangled it. I said, listen, <laughs> you can hear it there beside me. So perhaps, Matt, if you come across a Lisa from the Irish Daily Mail, you might assure her that I have the chain. It is in good hands, and it was here today. OK? So um, look, I want to thank and congratulate Silicon Valley on the excellence of their services and on their website. I have to admit, I am a Silicon Valley, not Silicon Valley, Silicon Republic. I am a Silicon Republic user. I think the site is clean. It's a great site to go to if you want to just get a feeling for what's going on at the moment. I use that site a lot. I'm not a subscriber. I don't subscribe to the, to the mail services or to the newsletters, but it's actually a great site. And that's what I like most about it, that it's clean. I'm delighted to be invited to address you here. I'm going to put the orange down. There's nowhere to put it here. I'd like to be here to address you here. Um, it's a, an area very close to my heart. As Matt mentioned, I, I set it out as a priority um, uh, for, for my term in terms of digital. Now, while I know it's an issue for, for all of Ireland, everybody recognises that Dublin needs to be a world leader in all things digital and to provide a strong ecosystem for nurturing you guys. You know, a lot of you are, are here, digital companies of the future. I'm particularly taken with the theme of this forum, which looks at the age of the connected consumer and at, at how it is transforming the way people deal with business, organisations and government. And I am extremely interested in what will come out of here today, particularly on the democratic side, what we can do in the City Council. I, the, uh, there was a suggestion that I give a little, small bit of background about me. I'm not going to say a whole lot other than say a few things. The first is I'm an engineer first and a politician second. I'm kind of a meddler, fixer sort of a person. Um, if you look at my phone, it's a little piece of duct tape there. Just along the side there, because again, one of those little people dropped the phone. So rather than throw it out, I'm waiting for Windows 8 and Nokia to come along and give us that, 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 that latest Lumia. By the way, I'm very loyal to Nokia as well. If there's anybody from Nokia or Microsoft here, <laughs> I'm. <laughs> so if there's a deal, a very good deal going on a Lumia, I'm your man. <laughs> uh, there's no politics in the family at all. My folks would run a thousand miles from politicians. Uh, I have a professional disregard, professional disregard for the legal classes. Uh, solicitors, lawyers, and accountants. I didn't mean to say accountants, but let's just say solicitors and lawyers. <laughs> probably rooted in the fact that they don't actually make anything. Um, I know, now I know I've probably fallen out of a few of you now at this stage, but please forgive me. Um, one of my stated priorities, as Matt set out, was to ensure that Dublin becomes a truly digital city for young and old. Now, I go, you know, I was in Brussels yesterday. Um, and there were cities there, and they're saying, we're going to be a digital city of the future. We're going to be, everybody's saying it now. Everybody's saying, Milton Keynes was saying it. Guadalajara, the, Me the, ambassador, the amb Mexican ambassador says, Guadalajara is going to be the digital city of the future. Everybody's saying it now. So we need to say, what are we going to be? You know, how are we going to be the digital city 
of the future. I know we have a good guy here from the UK who's going to tell us a bit about what, what they're doing uh, in East London. Um, so what, what is the city itself doing? Dublin City Council, I suppose, is where, where I, what I want to say in terms of what the city is doing. So I'm just going to say three things. Um, the first is Wi-Fi. So, I mean, since 2007, I've been plugging away at the whole area of Wi-Fi and trying to get the free Wi-Fi side of things going. Now, we had an issue in 2007, 2008, around you know, the advice in terms of the commission. The, I mean, the indications from the European Commission was that you know, the city shouldn't really get involved in this so, sort of area, et cetera. So anyway, it's kind of bureaucratic and complex. But um, <coughs> delighted to say that, obviously, I, you probably know the city is now working on the rollout of a series of public uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, which will be free throughout the city. We're talking 20, 20 plus installations in public parks and facilities like that around the city. Um, we're hoping to launch it around Innovation Week, which is in the middle of um, uh, October. Now, not all, I don't expect that every site will be up, but we'll have a number of them up, which will be the start. I think, though, the key for the city is that we don't want to just build, build a thing and kind of leave it. I think the city should be building it and then using it. So the city should be turning around and saying, OK, we've put this network in place. If it's in a park, how are we going to use the network to make the park safer? How are we going to use the network to make people aware of what's available in a park, etc.? So it's not a question of building it. There'll be opportunities for you guys to use that network. But like the city, if the city is going to be truly into digital, the city is immediately going to start saying, well, how, what are we going to do with it now that we have it in a practical way? The, other, the, other, um, the second thing I just want to mention, give a brief mention to, is the Dublin Project. It's rather ominously titled, but it's actually quite a good project, the Dublin Project. Um, I don't know if Johnny Ryan, John, John, Johnny Ryan is the innovation, uh, Chief Innovation Officer for the Irish Times. You may or you may not be here. I, we went down to the Digital Hub a few weeks ago and we met jo Johnny and a group of people that they have embedded. They've embedded these guys into the Irish Times. I think it's three, t three teams working in the Irish Times for a period of about six to eight weeks trying to kind of get things moving a little bit in terms of innovation. And I think they're having great fun with the executives in the Irish Times and trying to, you know, trying to, you know it's a bit like a wave crashing on the shore trying to get them to think new ways and new ideas. We're hoping to do a little bit of that in the city as well. It's quite kind of disruptive. I mean, you guys know all that terminology already. Um, it's called the Dublin Project. It's going to involve uh, an institute called the Institution Without Boundaries and uh, DIT. And the intention is there's a, there's a little piece called a, what's called a Dublin charrette, which I just want to tell you about. It's a design charrette which will be held in Dublin in the first, first week of November, which will explore new opportunities in public space and it's shared use in Dublin. What they're going to be looking at is the public space, like a park. You know, from first principles, how will we, you know, what should we redo in that park? A street. Well, that's not the way the street should be. The street should be this way. So it's actually quite first principles. And it'll involve the city, you know, business people and residents. You know, very important. Now, it's quite, it's quite innovative in that it'll be from the bottom up. It won't be too structured. And the idea is this disruption as well, because the city... I mean, city, the city is, is a big, you know, traditionally has been bureaucratic. So it's a big organization, and it's very hard to get flow of ideas, things moving. So I'd be hoping that that's dis that'll be quite good. It should yield some interesting, disruptive stuff for the city. Um, the third thing I just want to give you a mention to is Beijing. So we, I was in Beijing with a, dele with a tr tourism delegation last week, and... Um, it was interesting, but we did, we did a very practical thing. I think Peter, I saw Peter Finnegan knocking around here. We, we have, we have www.dublin.ie. We put up on that slash forward slash Beijing, and we put a, you know, an, a, a bit about Dublin, a series, of, a series of Dublin's main attractions in Mandarin. Okay, so it went up there. And then we were in Beijing, and we were trying to get as many Chinese as we could to actually go to the site and tell us a bit about what they know about Dublin, what would attract them to Dublin. And it'll be interesting to see, because it was a bit like canvassing. We went down the main, the main, the main drag in Beijing, and um, what the Chinese did was they kind of bookended both ends of the main street and then called it a kind of a tourism expo, which is quite clever, because you have a huge throughput of people through that main street. Like, they talk about fifty to 100,000 people a day going through, so they, they are of sufficient scale. They can put two bookends at each end of that street and call it an expo, set up a series of stands. Uh, but we were encouraging as many people as possible. It was like canvassing for election on the streets, trying to get people to go to the site. And uh, it will be very interesting to see what people are saying in terms of what they know about Dublin. I mean, we met a senior tourism guy there, and the only two things he could say about Dublin was Riverdance 
and Rory McIlroy. And this was, <laughs> this was it. And this is the senior tourism guy. So it just shows you how much Dublin has to do to actually convince or to build awareness in Beijing. And by the way, Beijing gets 320 million internal Chinese visitors a year. So we just get a small part of that for Dublin. It will be worth a huge amount. So, Matt, I don't want to, I don't want to go on too long. Um, I know you have a very packed uh, agenda. I, I just want to finish with a few things. It's just to appeal to you all. I mean, I, I saw, I think it was Forbes had it this week, they had a little survey whereby they have Dublin down as one of the best places in the world to set up a business. And I know you guys are all involved in that, some, that way, that game, one way or the other, even the lawyers. You're all involved in the startups. So um, that's down to you. And I would encourage you, really ask you to keep that going. We do need to make, you know, this idea of Dublin being digital city, that needs to become something practical and something worthwhile. Anything you feel from a city perspective, and by the city I mean Dublin City Council, but we do work with the other three Dublin local authorities in terms of the region. So anything that you feel is worthwhile doing to actually, you know, make the city that little bit more digitally friendly, I want to hear about it. Um, you know, we our plan is we want, I mean, from a lobbying perspective, we're looking for 100 meg synchronous up and down. That's our, you know, many other cities in the world, some of the more connected cities in the world have that. There's no reason why Dublin wouldn't have that. That's what we want when it comes to lobbying. Um, I suppose I just want to close by saying, again, I was in, in terms of Brussels yesterday, uh, Matt, um, you know, lots of cities spoke, and they were all saying at the very end, well, just come back to our city. We have a great city. Please come and see it. And it's 250 people in the room. And, you know, this one time we were speaking towards the end. I was trying to think, what can I say that would be a little bit different? So I says, okay, like everybody else, please come back to Dublin. But by the way, I said, I've checked, and there's a, an Aer Lingus flight leaving at 10 past 9. Tonight, there's a few free seats on it. So anybody that comes with me on that flight, I will serve you all. I'll pull you all a pint of Guinness in the mansion house by 11 o'clock tonight. Now, that got, I didn't get anybody to come with me, by the way. <laughs> and to be honest, I didn't expect anybody. So I'm reluctant, Matt, to make the same offer here because the mansion house <laughs> is a lot closer. It's a lot closer to here. But I will say we have culture night, in, culture night is today in the mansion house. There are tours going uh, on a half hour basis, excuse me, in terms of the history of the mansion house. Anybody that does produce, comes down and does produce uh, uh, you know, uh, an ID from today, we will make sure they get a pint again. Okay, thanks very much.